Pastor Jay to come on up. Hallelujah. She uh, she wrote this song. Let me get her to sing right. <laughs> Job is here, 
We pray this morning that the Lord will give you eyes to see the invisible. Yes. Yes. Having eyes to see the invisible. All right, y'all loaded up, ready to go? Okay, it's okay. We all, and it's, I think we can all say we got more time than money. Yeah. All right. Well, I ain't nowhere. I want to welcome you back at 6 o'clock tonight. I believe the Lord going to meet us and stir us again. 6.30 on Wednesday nights. If you have you, don't you love it? Places full of God's people. Yes. And let me go ahead and make you an assurance and tell you right now, there's one need in the house. If there's one that's not born again, if there's one that might have grown cold on God, if there's one that's sick in their bodies and they feel like they need a medical miracle, how many knows that the Lord is able, He's capable, and He desires to meet us in our needs. First Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 15. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And look what Paul says here, for whom I am chief. Yes. Aren't you glad the Apostle Paul never got the big head? Yes. He never thought he would arrive. He never thought that it, it, it wouldn't be possible for him to go back to that world of religion. Yes, 16 says, How be it for this cause I obtain mercy? That in me, Jesus, in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him in our two life everlasting. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, and what? Invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever. And ever, amen, Hebrews chapter number 11, starting in verse number 24. By faith, it's kind of like just a tag on to this morning's, really appreciate giving us your attention this morning, and again, I'm, I was honored to get to stand before you there in that first hour this morning, but uh, Hebrews eleven twenty three 23, by faith. Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come of years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he that destroyed of the firstborn should touch them Amen. And one more verse in verse 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, meaning they were following them to take them back captive. But what happened? They were drowned. Pray with me, Father. We so love you here and thank you. God, we just ask you to have your way now. Hide me behind this glorious cross. Speak. Lord, through these lips that you created, oh God, we pray, we give you praise and glory for who you are, Lord, and feel, and I feel the anticipation of just you doing something in this house. We praise you, thank you, glorify you, and we ask all this in Jesus' wonderful name, and you would say, Amen. amen. Give the Lord one good praise, and you be seated here this morning. Having eyes to see the invisible. All through scriptures you find people, you could call them Bible characters, men and women of God, 
The one thing that slips our attention sometimes, it seems like we lose grasp on it, that these men and women of this Bible, that, that historic truths were wrote about, was just like you and I. Moses wasn't this big supernatural creature that had all the faith that nobody else had none. No, sir. He was just like you and I. Amen. And it showed in his physical character where that he even killed a man. Now, I hope and pray that not one of us here has ever killed anybody in a violent death. But if not careful, you and I can kill him all day long with his tongue. Come on. We can, we can destroy a man's reputation by just, by just with some of the, the words out of our mouth. And uh, Moses was, had came to years, and, and we know that God began to visit him and, and, and deal with his heart. And when, when this happened, that when he hit a man's body in the sand and he took the flight, uh, glory to God, that God began to, to really begin to stir him. And when he's on the on the backside of a mountain, uh, he was tending to uh, his father-in-law, future father-in-law sheep, uh, Jethro by name, that, that he lost one of the sheep and he was fulfilling now a prophecy that the Lord talked about in the New Testament when he pointed at all the shepherds and he said, which one of you that would lose one? We would not leave the 90 and 90 and go and seek the one. Now we know when Jesus, his parable there was talking about the souls, amen, people that needed to be born again. We see again, remember the Old Testament is a school teacher. It's history for you and I. We saw that whole enactment come out in, in, in the book of Ex Exodus there. And while Moses was seeking the sheep, or he found something greater. Yes. He saw now all of a sudden he is the sheep that's being sought. Glory to God. And there is a, a bush that sets on fire. And I love what it says here. It's burning, but it can't be, it won't be consumed. It's not consumed. And the Bible said, and when Moses turned and looked at the burning bush, God began to talk to him. What I want you to glean from that right there, God will try to get your attention in different methods and measures, but until you stop and pay homage, until you stop and, and, and just begin to really get inquisitive of what, Lord, what's going on here, there's a supernatural act using a regular bush and fire. But the fire will consume the bush because the fire was put in the bush to consume the heart of Moses and the Bible says when Moses uh, give attention and saw an audience to that burning bush then and only then did God talk to him in our everyday cycles of life and our busyness of, of life to try to do this and run here go there be this uh, accomplish that and nothing, all that's got its place but the first and foremost thing that we we me and you needs to become today as the is be the son and the daughter of the most high God and the rest of that stuff is going to all burn up anyway it's all going to pass away glory to God but Jesus said not one word of my holy book is going to pass away. It'll be fulfilled, but let me tell you, friend, I see the Lord in His invisible state where faith becomes tangible. It becomes tangible. It becomes holy. God's Word is holy. Amen. And God's created you and I to be holy. He said, without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Amen. And I know there's a lot of religion that's put a lot of spins on holiness and holy but can I tell you there's just a simple a simple definition of holiness when you become holy is when you get the holy God right here amen. and you allow you die to self that God can minister amen to you that God can teach you that God can correct you do you know why they were successful in being disciples because they didn't mind Jesus correcting them and when Jesus went back on the right hand of the Father, He sent the Holy Ghost down, the Corrector. Oh, I know He's a Comforter. Oh, He comforts us. He does, but He leads, guides, and directs us. He don't want, he, it's not His plan to beat on you all the time. It's not His plan to put His foot on your head. He feels, listen, He teaches, and He said this is what would become of you and I, that we'd be sensitive to His Spirit. We would hear what saith the Lord by the Holy Spirit of God. And now we don't have to be driven 
we can be led, yeah. right? We can be led by the Spirit of God. Now, here's Moses now. He's reached a, a different chapter in his life, and uh, and he's he's desiring he's desiring the Lord. He and now, but watch this. But when the Lord uh, says, "Okay, Moses, I want you to do this, this, and this," then all of a sudden, it overpowered Moses. You could tell Moses was meek and, and, and humble. Because he didn't jump up and ask, oh yeah, God, I got this. No, no. He was meek and humble. He said, God, I got a stuttering problem. And <laughs> I got this. I can't do that. No, I'm a murderer. All, 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 all the reasons we tell God sometimes why we can't do the work he's called us to do. You know, you know why we do that? Because we're looking at us. We got we to lift our eyes higher than us. We got to lift our eyes to the Lord. And with God, all things are possible, right? Right? Come on. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us if we keep our eyes on the Lord. But, Pastor, you've already said that there's five places in the New Testament where the terminology for God is an indivisible God. You have to understand that through faith. It was subdued nations. They would stop the mouths of lions. They, uh, there was so much they would do. Listen, friend. Quit trying to look for, for God in the natural. Because you's always going to be invisible when you try to look at Him in the natural. But when you allow the faith that we proclaim to have to take that step and to be pressed on that solid rock, amen, when Moses himself said, Lord, I beseech your glory, there's nobody else in that Bible prayed that prayer and asked the Lord for that. Uh, the most holiest of prayer and the, and, the, and, and the desire to see the holiness of God, the glory of God, and and at that time, God said, no man can see my face and live. But he says, Moses, I will honor your request. I'll hide you in the cleft of a rock. That's the cutting of a rock. And you will see my hinder parts as my glory goes past. And you will know you've been in the presence of the Lord. Well, can I tell you, that rock is Jesus Christ. And that cutting away was a covenant that Jesus fulfilled in Calvary. Because Moses has had a heart. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. They wanted water. The Lord said, smoke the rock. Smite it. And when he smoked the rock, the water gushed out during the during, during 40 years of wilderness travel. And that one rock contained millions and millions and millions of gallons of water. And Paul said in Corinthians, that didn't even follow them around. <laughs> Talk about the glory of God. Yeah. All right, get it out of your mind. It wasn't it was this big giant rock floating in the air, following and it was holding like a balloon. That's what the words saying here. They had faith. And those that didn't have faith died in the wilderness. See, because it's like this. The opposite of faith is, is unbelief. And unbelief will, will lead to murmuring and complaining and, and making excuses and all these things and things and things. And they died in the wilderness. That's why the 11 to 14 day journey took 40 years. Because there was an operation of, of holiness taking place in the camp of flesh. And no flesh can glory in the sight of God. Right? Having eyes to see. Who wants the eyes to see the invisible? This morning? Listen, let's move into this. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. As by, meaning this, as by dry line, you know God opened that Red Sea. And they didn't have to come out the other side and wipe the mud off their feet. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. He made, a, he made a way that seemed to be no way, huh? He even says, Isaiah prophesied and said, Our Lord, he can, make, he can make dry places in the middle of an ocean, or He can make an ocean, amen, in, a, in the heat of the desert. Glory to God. Meaning that He can do all things. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. They saw the invisible God now. Listen, in the appearance, in the appearance of doom and despair, arises the delight and assurance of the saving power of the Lord. Let's talk a minute. Uh, haven't you had a time in your life since you've been serving the Lord that it seemed impossible to fulfill the plan or the task that maybe the Lord has put before you? Oh, come on. We don't have a, we don't have a problem praying and asking the Lord. But when it's time, okay, get up now from your, from your, your, your uh, place of, of prayer and operate in the things in the faith. Amen. Uh, then all of a sudden the enemy shows us why we can't do it. Uh, the old flesh says you, you won't do it, but you can look your eyes to an invisible
visible Christ, amen, and you can see him highly and lifted. He's holy, he's high, and he's lifted up, uh, and we, amen, and we serve the God, hey, amen, of, I, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, of that old historical fact. Uh, that's going to take into consideration that everybody uh, in, in Abraham or after Abraham, amen, can see this Lord. If Moses saw him in a burning bush, uh, hey, Abraham on that covenant, uh, he done all he could do. And then he went into deep sleep. Uh, but the one, amen, that looked like a fiery furnace uh, walked by himself uh, in those split sacrifices on the left and the right. Huh? Abraham brought the covenant as far as he could do, but God had to do the rest. Yes, and the Bible said in the book of Galatians, Paul said, and Abraham believed God, and God called it righteousness. Yes. Not Abraham's righteousness, not our righteousness, but the righteousness of God. Seeing, I want to see this invisible God. A amen. In Exodus 14 and 19, they're on, the, they're on their journey. The angel of the Lord moved and he moved from, remember now, on their journey, the Lord, the, the power of the Lord and the direction of God was in a cloud. And by day, this cloud moved. And when that cloud moved, the trumpeters blew the sound, and they, the count moved. But then when this cloud stopped, they stopped and would, 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 would count. Uh, he, he moved. And his movement was followed by all the glory and the light that was in him and with him. At night when he decided to move, he just set that cloud of fire. And they saw the Lord. They didn't see the silhouette of, of some human form standing on the cloud. Dear God, one day we are. Yeah. One day we're going to see the Lord as he is. He's going to break open the eastern skies and he's going to call us up in the cloud. Glory to God. I believe that. I believe we're going to see the Lord standing on that, that place, that palace of glory there for all the world to see. And in that moment, it's like the ark in Noah's day when the, when the doors lifted and it's sealed with pitch. There's no getting in now. Be ready. You be ready at the most... Vulner, your vulnerable hour when you feel like you you, you 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 just ain't got this thing together no more when you feel like you can't do it anymore when you feel like it what's the use anymore uh, uh you fall down and find you a place of prayer and you say lord make me ready help me destroy this old nature that i can be ready to meet you and because he's going to come as a thief in the night he's going to come at the most inconvenient hour for you and i Huh? Look. He says now, so the Lord moved and his moving was followed by all the glory and the light that was within him. He moved. Now watch. He moved from the front of the congregation because they've been in pursuit by the Egyptians now. Very simple. The, the simple concept of the Red Sea. You could spend days and weeks and months and still not digest the whole story. Amen. And when you see the severity and the statutes, not statutes as in physical, but statutes, laws. Amen. Do you know you're still walking? Stay with me now. You're still walking in the law, but it's another law. It's the law of grace now. We don't we don't serve the law, the old schoolmaster. It couldn't it couldn't be served. It couldn't be accomplished. But we do have a. In fact, even Paul said, "There's another law in in you and I. It's grace." Oh, listen. Grace, 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 huh? Aren't you glad about grace? Uh, but be careful, at least we spit in the face of grace. Uh, be careful, at least we trample the we, we trample the, the the whole opportunity of grace. Uh, when you really understand the concept of grace, uh, how Jesus Christ has given you and I grace because He fulfilled the plan of the Father, and then you and I won't give nobody else grace. Come on, uh, if you ever understand, Amen, that we all belong in hell, but God didn't create hell for you and I because he's a loving father and he wants us into heaven but you've got to understand and learn and comprehend and walk in grace amen, amen. having eyes to see the invisible here so now we see now uh, the Egyptians are closing in fast they have the Red Sea the Red Sea's not opened up but now with the, the outstretched hand of Moses 
God opens the parts of the waters of the Red Sea. Now uh, the Egyptians, the panic starts at the, at the back of the room, the back of the crowd, and it works its way all the way up in the ears of Moses. The Egyptians look look at the great army coming to either kill us. I think that I think basically they didn't really didn't want to kill them. They wanted to just keep them in captivity. Yeah. Yeah. Let that sink in there just for a minute. You know, we all said the devil's trying to kill me. I don't think the devil. The devil can get more glory when he keeps you in captivity. Right, right. Yeah. When you keep falling and tripping and fumbling around and you're up and down and in and out. Oh, yeah, the devil can get way more glory than that. Then you just take your last breath and be put in a hole. Yeah. Yeah. Understand this. The devil can't put you in captivity unless you give him the key to the captive right. place. Right. But understand, guys, the devil don't have the keys no more. Hallelujah. I said the devil don't have the keys no more. In fact, in Matthew chapter 16, when he asked the, 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 the small gathering called, amen, the church there, hallelujah, who does men say that I am? And you know the story. One says Elijah, one says Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Uh, and then Jesus looked at those uh, those few disciples. He said, but who do you say that I am? I'm not asking for feedback down that street down there. I don't care what you're in in the Jerusalem Gazette. Uh, who do you say that I am? And Peter opened his mouth and with the revelation of the Father in heaven he said you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. And Jesus said Peter flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you but my Father which is in heaven and upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom the things you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And the things you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. What Jesus was saying, get off your backside and take authority in the spirit of God. We wait on God. Wait on God. We wait on God. Wait on God. And all of a sudden the Holy Ghost clears his throat and says, no, we wait on you. To take your rightful place in the kingdom of God. We're waiting on you to be stirred past just good intentions. We wait on you, the Holy Ghost would say, that you would actually grab a hold of this thing and make it real. Because I want to tell you, when you make it real, it becomes realness. And everything around you will see the realness of God. Glory to God. You're in this building project. I'm running back into a lot of my old gang. No, not that kind of game. Just good old country boys that went to school. We've done, you know, done a lot of stupid stuff. So some of us here, you know, that he's preaching now. One of them laughed at me the other day. And then there was another one said, oh, don't laugh at him. He's, he's serious about this thing. Huh? The, the, the first thing the flesh wants to do is try to make sure they all know. But that's the flesh. That's why you keep the flesh dead. Yeah. Because I want to tell you, that world knows if you're real or not. It ain't no difference in you you walking into somebody's yard with that fence there in that gate. And on that gate says a big sign, beware of dog. And that dog, when he comes to you, they tell you just to kind of offer the back of your hand. I like my hand. Amen. But I, 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 know, I know what the old man used to tell me. He said, uh, you offer the dog, but you can't offer it in fear. Because if you are that dog or sense, and he might not bite you, but he's going to make sure you know that he could bite you. You know, dogs has got sense of humor too, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, you go in there with weak knees and trembling like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sister Teresa used to have a big German shepherd that when somebody would come to the door, he would reach and just grab their hand. And, and just hold all them canine teeth and they just got, they knocking right here and said, please Lord, somebody come to the door. <laughs> because that big old German Shepherd, he wasn't putting no pressure but he was letting everybody there know that he was the boss. Come on. Huh? It's the same way with walking in God, friend. Huh? The devil's going to rise up and the Egyptians is going to pursue and all the negative aspects is going to come flooding in huh? and then you lose sight of the invisible God and now your fear and your frustration and you panic, leads to more problems. Uh, and what are you going to do when you're in peril? I tell you 
what to do, lift up your eyes past your troubles, past your situation, and understand this, God still got this. He's not asleep. He's not petrified. He didn't lose his opportunity to help you. He just wants somebody to call on the name of the Lord. Clap your hands. And the Lord. Amen. Having eyes to see the invisible. That cloud moved from the front of the, to the back. And you, if you've read it, you'll read it like this. And then that cloud, at night, it's fire. He become light to these, his people. He stood. That cloud got between the Egyptian army and the last person in the line. Don't you know there's a lot of pushing and shoving? I mean, there's a million, some, some, some bunches of people ahead of you, and you're at the tail end. So by by legality and right thinking in the natural mind, you're probably gonna be the first one to go down, or be brought back in chains. But that that listen to the beauty of, of this invisible God. He left the front, and he come and he got between God's people and the world. Egypt's a type of the world. And the Bible said he become light to these, his people, where they could keep traveling because their waters are busted open now. But then he become darkness to them. The same God that gave light gave darkness. The same God that was for one group of people was against another group of people. The world. Jesus said, this world is not our home. Amen. And that's why we're not even to be the friends of the world. You, you said, well, Pastor, well, I don't understand it. You mean if some worldly person comes in here and wants to give Brother Russell a million dollars, amen, for the project over there, we not to take it? Oh, no, take it, Brother Russell. Oh, take it, Brother Russell. Come on. We're going to pray over it. We're going to sanctify it. We'll march around it. Come on, somebody. That ain't what I'm talking about. Because it ain't not one of you right here, amen, goes to work without expecting a little reward, right? Come on. You go out there and you sweat and you toil and you labor because you know there's a reward coming. Well, guess what? The Bible said that we, the, the faith that we have in the Lord, He is a rewarder that diligently seek Him. Keep seeking the Lord. No, I'm not talking about silver and gold. I'm talking about walking in the presence of Almighty God that the Lord will be for you, not against you. Because the Bible said, if God be for you, it don't matter who gets against you, it will not prosper. Amen. Amen. So we see this. The Lord will be the light to some while being a stone of stumbling to others. Man, you got to understand when you're looking for the Lord, when you're searching Him out, when you get in these scriptures and you just say, Lord, I just need more of you. I want more of you. I need more understanding of who you really are. And you study then to show yourself approved unto God, not each other. So we get a tendency sometimes, if you're not careful, you'll get a tendency to trying to prove to somebody how many scriptures you can quote. Well, Jesus said the devil knows the Word of God. I mean, it was the devil that tempted Jesus in the wilderness after he fasted 40 days. So, we need to pray sometimes. Pray for others, Lord. But then you got to be careful when I say this because I know how this thing can play out. Lord, I pray that you open Brother Doug's eyes that he can see you in a higher regard. But watch out. Be careful. At least... There's a spirit of arrogance that's associated with to insinuate Brother Doug can't see the Lord. You see? So there's a, a, a method of praying in the reality of the gospel or if not careful, we assume and we lose understanding of who He is. He's righteous. We need to pray one for another. Sometimes we need to pray in a, in a way that, that's so specific. We do. But sometimes, amen, while we're praying, and we don't know in that moment then what the need really is, but we're still calling out the names. Come on. 
And if you're like me, I say, Lord, that one, and you know, God, I can't, I can't remember their name right now, but God, there's never been no mystery nor misstep in you. You know who the one that's in my heart right now that I'm praying for. And I ask you, Lord, I don't know what they're needing. Oh, God, I don't know where they're at with you, but God, you do. So I ask you, Lord, right now that you would just supernaturally touch them. Lord, supernaturally, and I love this word, reveal yourself. Yeah. This young man right here, go to the outside of the door. You don't have to. But but outside, and, and, and he's not. Yeah. And he speaks. But I can't associate a face with that voice. I understand the concept of wanting to get in. He's knocking. But sometimes, I can't discern who's doing the knocking. So I listen to the voice. And I said, oh, I got him now, boy. Come on. Come on in here, son. That's where you belong. Right? So we associate the knocking with a voice. But when we, revelation comes, we see, we see the identity of the face now. That's the character of a person, amen. The, the identity is the face. You you go get driver's license, they want to take a picture, amen. You get, you know, you get, uh, a, because it's used for identification, amen. The face. Remember what, what I told you uh, a while ago that when Moses desired to beseech the glory of the Lord and the Lord said he was faceless at that moment. He wouldn't let nobody see his face, uh, but he saw the hinder parts. Uh, but one day, when you speed up a few thousand years uh, and John the Baptist is to baptize it in the old muddy Jordan River. All of a sudden, to get, oh, come on, somebody. He's identified as the Lamb of God. He's got a face now. He's got, we understand now, is Jesus. Glory to God. All these few thousand years was preparation for the introduction of the glory of God coming off that hill down in that water. And like John said, Lord, you need to baptize me. But the Lord said, no, for fulfillment of Scripture, you baptize. Identity. We've all got an identity. We do. But some of you can't get past of your of the things that you've done in the past. So the past now stops you, stops you in your tracks in the present and it will destroy your future. Yes. Until you let go and let God. Yes. Not one of us is worthy of heaven. But it's been the plan of God for a long time to have every one of us in heaven. Yes, sir. You gotta to start to shake yourself. You've got to start looking. When you say, listen, when, they, when Abraham, glory to God, I'm not I'm trying not to be long. But when God, amen, sent Abraham up that mountain with his son Isaac, the blessed promised son of Isaac, amen, he was. Uh, and as they're going up the side of that mountain, amen, uh, Isaac, amen, says, Father, <laughs> well, here, we got, the, we got everything we need. We got the wood, the knife, and fire, everything, but where's the lamb? Now watch where faith comes alive. And don't shout and say, oh yeah, that was an easy no, no, that was not an easy thing. Knowing that now the Lord's told him to sacrifice. I said the Lord told him. The devil didn't tell him. And you sure enough know Sarah didn't tell him. I think he slipped slipped the boy out of the camp before Sarah even woke up. Because he had to understand no, the love of that mother for that promised seed. And this is what Abraham said, son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. Yeah. And it comes down to it that Isaac is led on that altar. And Abraham has taken this blade, this knife. And he's fixing to do what God asked him to do. Because he loves God. And he trusts God. Was he perfect? Absolutely not. But he loved God and trusted God. And, and at the moment, at the very critical second of that whole outgoing play, God speaks, Abraham. Abraham. And Abraham recognizes the voice. He still ain't seen the face, but he recognizes the voice. He said, here I am. He says, harm not your son. Yes. They've got to have a sacrifice. They know the order of covenant. He's got to have a sacrifice. But when Abraham lifted up his eyes, 
And I know sometimes we still interpret it preaching that the sacrifice was behind him. It didn't say he turned around. He just simply lifted up his eyes higher off of what he was fixing to do. And when he lifted his eyes, there was the ram with the horns caught up in the thicket. And he went over there and he took that ram. Amen. And he slit his throat. And, and come on, somebody. I want to, and then, then Abraham, when you know the tears was just pouring out of his eyes. When I believe that he looked up in heaven and threw his hands up and said, Jehovah Jireh. got to trust him. That's why it's called faith. It ain't feeling. All right, I'm almost done. Listen, there's places all, all through the scriptures. We talked about this just the other day in the city of Dotham, that, that Elisha was there and his servant was there and Dotham was a very mountainous range and, and uh, they were there and the enemy's coming to pursue Elisha. Amen. And uh, so they come and they count about the city all around them. And uh, that morning, this servant's going to take care of Elisha, so he's going to fetch water. He sees all the enemy around him. Okay? You, if you're making notes, you can, you can note it at 2 Kings chapter 6. Uh, don't turn. I'm just going to move fast right here. But uh, So he comes back to Elisha. He's petrified, guys. Everywhere he looks, every, every direction he turns, the enemy's camped around. There's no way out for him. And he knew that. And he was petrified. So he goes back to Elisha, the prophet, which was a type of Christ. And Elisha was the voice of God there. And he says, Elias, Master, how shall we do? I Meaning, what are we going to do? And Elisha just simply looked. He said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they be with them. Now you think at the moment that you're that servant, and everywhere you turn, there's enemy ready to pounce on you and then you tell it to your master and he says something like that when it's just you and him there come on uh, I mean can you imagine I wonder if that service blood pressure shot through it through the roof right I wonder if he said dear God we all gonna die today all two of us huh so look, look do you see that's why I said when you study slip your feet into those shoes and don't don't overlook the one that's got no faith. On, don't overlook the one that can't keep victory. Yeah. Don't, over, don't overlook the one, amen, that tried but they failed every time. Put your feet in their shoes too. Right. And learn to achieve yeah. the mission and the plan of that God's got for you. Is this making any sense? Yeah. Elisha says, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And then the next verse, Elisha's got, well... All right, Elisha, you said it, but I want to see some proof. So Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire about around and about Elisha. Meaning this, God still had that. Even because a one young man couldn't see the plan of God, Elisha is trying to impute within him some understanding. It don't matter if you don't see it. If you'll believe it, God will reveal himself to you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. If you can believe at times that your natural eyes can become your enemy. Now, let me help you with this because, because somebody read the, 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 the teaching of Jesus when your eye, pluck, uh, eye feed, you pluck it out. That's not what he's basically saying is that you don't dig your eye out of your head. But you separate with the thing. That, you separate with that offense. Huh? If your hand offends you, cut it off. And, and this is what the Lord did say. So his teaching is very, is very uh, thorough here. He said, because it's better to enter into heaven with one eye or one hand than to enter hell with two eyes and two hands. Yes, but understand the language there. We'll, we'll watch this. There was a blind, a blind man named Bartimaeus. 
right? My, my note here that the Lord gave me yesterday was this. And it's not profound, but it can become prophetic. Some with blinded eyes could still see Jesus better with those that had eyes and couldn't see. And Bartimaeus could see the Lord because of faith. He's been blind. He's been a beggar. No arguing that. He never argued that. That's who he was. That's what he did. But could it be possible he's been hearing about this man named Jesus? Then he said, I'm just going to sit right here and wait to my change to come. That's what Job said. I'll sit right here and wait till my change comes. I believe the Lord. I believe he believed the Lord. But then he proves it by this. All of a sudden, there's a crowd coming down that street. He's still sitting. He's still got his tin cup or whatever whatever instrument or, or plate or whatever he had. that uh, He had his garment on the beggar's coat or the beggar's garment. And he shakes it and he cries for alms. Alms. Please, somebody have pity on the blind. Could it be that he was just waiting right there? Expecting a change to come? You said don't say it. It don't say it didn't though either. Because when I tell you, he's holding and possessing something that a lot of the blind men wasn't possessing. Faith. Something but it's so invisible but comes very tangible when you operate in faith. So he hears the crowd coming. Jesus! The crowd's crying, Jesus, Holy Savior, Son of David. All these things. And Bartimaeus says, and now it's my opportunity. Yeah. Listen to it. Now it's time for me to get up from this place I've been sitting. And he goes, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. I hear faith being cried and you know it was something different because there's no mention of anybody else getting slapped or kicked or told to shut up when they cry out. But here's this blind man with faith. He's done locked in of seeing the, the, the tangible side of, of what he's operating in. And now he's projected already. He's already got a mental picture of what the face of the Lord looks like. Uh, glory to God. You and I have done that a thousand times, right? Uh, hey, uh, and he cries out again. They told him, shut up. Uh, he ain't got time for you. You're nothing but an old blind beggar. This is all you're going to ever be. You're going to fall and you're going to sit. You're not going to accomplish anything. Does that sound familiar? The way the world or the enemy talks to you. But he said, I'm not happy. And the Lord stopped and told him to call that man to me. The Lord didn't stop every time as he's going through the crowd. With a with a, with a, with a uh, woman with the issue of blood, he stopped. And he felt virtue leave his body. Huh? But now all of a sudden, you know the story. I love it. That blind beggar, he stands up. After he hears the word, they pull it on there. Come on. Yeah. The Lord's calling for him. He throws that old beggar's garment off yeah. of him. That's what yeah. identified who he, who he was. He said, I ain't that person no Amen. more. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You don't have to be that person no more. You can leave out of here seeing the invisible. Yeah. You can leave out of here with all the faith that you need to bring you to the next level of where God's trying to get you to. Yeah. Quit looking at your past. We've all got that thing called past. We've all slipped and we failed. We all got frustrated and said, what's the use? We, we've all tried before. That's, what, that's how religion says. We've tried to do this Jesus thing before. Well, let me tell you, if you fail and you fail, don't give up. Get yourself back up again and look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, and live this thing out. Now, Bartimaeus, can feel the Lord breathing on him. What you need, what you want. Wasn't no mystery what he wanted. He's already performed. He's already performed that duty. Everybody knew what he wanted. 
But sometimes the Lord wants you to tell him. I can pray for you. Brother David can pray for you. One of his sisters can pray for you, sisters. But until you pray. And I'm, I am a firm believer as a pastor. And I love people more than life itself. But it's a hard task when, when we as pastors or whatever the call of God is wants more for the congregation than they want for themselves. It's, it wears you out. It tires you. You know what I'm talking about. you got somebody you've been praying for and praying for. And you want this. And, oh, God, you Lord, help them and this and that. But they don't want it as bad. They become a taxation to the mind and to the heart. But don't give up. Because we were a taxation to somebody else back in our time. Right? Right? So the Lord touches him. Faith touched the Lord. And in return, the Lord touched him. Stand with me this morning. I want you to hear that. Faith touched the Lord. And in return, the Lord touched him. Bartimaeus. I, I feel at times that we're more desperate than we are at other times. Make any sense? When everything's going good, man, everything's perfect. Boy, everybody just loves us. Huh? And we ain't got no problems, no cares of life. Everybody's healthy. We fall in the deadly trap of, of throttling down. Throttling back. Now we're not, we're not pursuing the miracle that we were looking for when we was up against it. When our backs was against the wall and seemed like everything you put your hands on just blew up. And, and you couldn't find the comfort and the hope that you once held on to. And it causes you to your mind to be in peril. And the problem seems like it overtakes the promise that God has already made you. And it leaves you bewildered. Where it leaves you is a proverbial crossroad. Uh, and only you can make that decision now. Am I going to keep on going straight unto the Lord? Or am I going to start drifting to the left? Or drifting to the right? Or work than that, turn around and go back. Uh, I want to tell you, friend, looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, if you will keep your eyes and your heart and your mind on Him, yes. Amen. Amen. so that's the altar call this morning. Not accusing anybody of being backslid, not saying that we're not praying people, I'm not saying you don't live holy enough. I'm not saying that you don't do your part. I'm not saying none of that. I'm just saying we got an altar call this morning for people that's really ready and serious to see an invisible God yes. and the acts of that invisible God. I want you to come to these altars right now as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, maybe you need to see the Lord for somebody else. And pray a little more for them. But be not deceived. I believe that every one of us could grow closer to the Lord. And desire more of His anointing. To walk more in His presence. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Lord, that we desire to see the, your invisibleness that will come so clear. So clear. Oh, we love you. We thank you. We bind every lying spirit out of the ears and the minds and the hearts of your people. We bind that lying devil and this ugly flesh that tries to convince us we're never going to reach or obtain the victory that we can have in Christ. Pray all over this place household of faith. Come on. Huh? Talk to the Lord. Lay it at His feet. Say, Lord, I'm going to be like that old beggar. I, I see you now. I see you high and lifted up. I see you, Lord. I'm, I'm going to keep my eyes. I'm going to keep my heart upon you. Oh, God, we pray. Jesus. Jesus.